grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for today is taken from the Gospel lesson for today. We will use one verse from that and other verses from the Bible. Our text is John 8, verse 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, will have the light of life. We pray, open our eyes, Lord, that we might behold wonderful things from your word. Amen. <coughs> Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, we are having this Lenten theme for our Wednesday services, which is promised treasures. Promised treasures. And today's theme is light and you realize what a treasure light is when you close your eyes. So close your eyes, everyone, close your eyes just for uh, just a couple of seconds till I tell you to open them. Close your eyes. Imagine life without light, with no light at all. In other words, you were blind. I mean, just feel around, uh, around you just to feel, get your bearings. Imagine having to live that way, to feel for the door, just to go out the door, you couldn't drive, obviously. How terrible that would be. Okay, open your eyes. See, you see, that indeed is a treasure. Light, physical light, the ability to see is such a treasure. But also spiritual light is a treasure. And that's what we talk about tonight. Spiritual light. In other words, the fact that Jesus brings us light. He brings light to our lives so that we can see what is true, what the Bible speaks of. The fact that there is heaven, there is hell, there is a Savior. All the truths of the Bible we understand because Jesus lives in our heart and has given us spiritual sight so that we can see. So we thank God today for the promised treasure of light and that Jesus is the light of the world. Now, in our church, we have these candles so beautifully shining here, reminding us of the fact that God is light, and He brings us this spiritual light. And here we have the eternal light, reminding us again that God is always there. So this candle never goes out, reminding us that God is always present with us. For Jesus said in Matthew 28, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So, as we see these candles, it reminds us of Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. As he says in our text from Romans, I mean, sorry, from John 8. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And so Jesus brings light to us as we believe in him. And such a powerful light he is that he brings light to the whole world, to everyone who will believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior, so that they can see the truths of God's Word and understand and believe those truths found in God's Word. Yes, Jesus is the light, bringing us hope, bringing us faith, truth, peace, Jesus brings us hope, faith, truth, peace. His light is such a blessing to us. Now, because of our sin, we oftentimes stray from God and we get into the world of the darkness, the darkness of sin. Unfortunately, we as a human race experience that darkness way back in Genesis chapter 3. As Adam and Eve fell into sin, they first experienced that darkness that comes with sin. While as before they had this relationship with God, which was like friendship, now all of a sudden, after they fell into sin, they hid from God. As we read in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God, as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God 
among the trees of the garden. The Lord God called to the man, Where are you? You see, they hid because of their sin. And so we likewise, we run away from God as we sin and we hide. We don't want to be in God's presence anymore. We love the darkness. We are sinners. But God calls out to you as he called out to Adam, Where are you? God wants to have a relationship with us. He wants us to receive forgiveness for our sin and come into his presence again. And thank God we can come into the presence of God through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 1, we have this beautiful picture of forgiveness. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. And so, here I have this red paper to remind us of what our sin looks like. It is a stain upon our souls. And yet, the Lord says, Though your sins are like scarlet, as they are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. And you remember the beautiful snows when they snow, when the snow falls on the whole countryside, and it looks so beautiful then. Everything is so nice. I mean, you, you have a junkyard, and it's covered with snow, and it looks beautiful. And that's what God's forgiveness does for our lives of sin. It makes our lives beautiful again. He forgives us. How? By the power of the cross. The power of the cross of Jesus Christ. Because he was willing to suffer and die for us. And that's what we remember. This Lenten season, of course. The fact that Jesus suffered and died for us. But then he rose again from the dead. And now, through faith in Jesus Christ, you are forgiven of your sin. And you are given the gift of eternal life. All through faith in Jesus Christ. So we thank God that though we are sinners, through Christ we are forgiven. Through Christ we are giving, given the gift of eternal life. Because though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. What a beautiful promise that we have in Jesus Christ. And so now that he has forgiven us, now that his light shines in our hearts because we believe in him, we have that hope, the truth, the faith. We have joy because of Jesus living inside of our hearts. And now we shine the light to other people. We now become a light shining to this world. In the darkness of this world, you are a light. Just like right now. You know, it was it was a few minutes before five, I, and I arrived here, and there was nobody here. <laughs> uh, and you know, and then to see you all here, it is so beautiful, it's so wonderful. You know, you are a light. Just your presence here is a light. Just showing that Church matters, that God matters. It is so beautiful. Thank you so much for coming to worship tonight. Now, it could be you came here just for the great meal we're having afterwards. I understand that. <laughs> but uh, the point is, you're here. And we're here to encourage one another. And that is so important. But you see, we shine the light of Christ with our lives. We see this in Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus says, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. We just read... From John 8, Jesus says, He is the light of the world. But now in Matthew 5, He says, You are the light of the world. Because you see, He is shining in our lives, just like the sun shines and the moon reflects that light. 
and the full moon is so bright at night, once the sun is set, in the same way, you are like that full moon, shining bright for Jesus Christ with the good deeds that you do, one of which is coming to church. And of course, there are many good deeds, reading the Bible, praying, showing love to one another, and the Bible goes on and on with these good deeds. But the point is, Jesus says, in the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. So the good deeds that we do are not so we can pat ourselves on the back. The good deeds that we do are so that we can praise our Father in heaven. So that as someone gives you a compliment, for the good thing you do, you say, well, thank God that he put that in my heart. Or thank God that he enabled me to do this. Or I want to give praise to Jesus Christ because he's working in my life. Whatever way you want to say it, we give praise to our Heavenly Father for he is working in our lives. Jesus is shining in your life. And as you look around you, you see the wonderful people that are here gathered. You know the lights that shine in, in all of you. The things you do for God, it's wonderful. Thanks for all those wonderful things that you do. Shine in your light for Jesus Christ. Continue to let that light shine. For, yes, Jesus is the light of the world. As he said in John 8, I am the light of the world. Whoever, whoever follows me will not walk in darkness. will have the light of life. And now we have that light of life that comes from Jesus. And so now, this is true as well from Matthew 5. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Yes, that light in your life began to shine when you first believed in Jesus as your Savior or when you were first baptized. And as you were baptized, you were given a candle similar to this, probably. Those of you that are younger, ask your folks if, if they still got one of these. They should have one for you. And it's a nice thing to do, to light it uh, every, every day that you remember your baptism, your baptism, baptismal birthday. You say, well, I don't know when that is. Well, hopefully you have a baptismal certificate. Find out what that day is and write it down, like in your Bible or somewhere important, so you won't forget that day. And remember your baptismal birthday. Remember that you were baptized into Christ and that you became a child of God as you were baptized into Christ. But what is the purpose of the candle? Well, as Pastor Pulse from our seminary in Fort Wayne says, a simple baptismal candle signifies that Jesus Christ is the light of the world and, he, and that he dwells within the baptized, shining through their lives. Again, that's what the candle's for. To signify that Jesus Christ is the light of the world and that he dwells within the baptized, shining through their lives. So, maybe you haven't been doing that. We always remember our birthday, but it's a great thing to do, to remember your baptismal birthday. If you don't remember when it is, if you can't find your baptismal certificate, just call the church here. We got it written down. Remember your baptismal birthday. What a beautiful thing to remember. And find that old baptismal candle. If you can't find it, that's fine. Just get another one to replace it. If you really want a special one, you can, you can buy one from the church here. Or otherwise, you can just create a special candle. For example, this one has some symbols on, on it of baptism. You can put some symbols on there on a special candle that you create as well to light every baptismal birthday. Remember that you are baptized. You're a child of God. As Jesus is the light of the world, now your light shines with the love of Jesus Christ. Like the moon. You don't have light in yourself, but as you have your face set on Jesus Christ, His light, the light of the sun, reflects on the moon, and so you now are light to the world.
Sometimes darkness comes into our personal lives, though. Maybe the darkness of sin, but maybe it is the darkness of a problem. Just like the financial problems that come our way, or the health problems, or relationship problems, these kind of problems come into our life. And this darkness can be tough for us at times. It can be difficult. But you see, Jesus Christ's light shines into the darkness of your life, giving you hope in the midst of those difficulties. So think about what is the darkness that you're facing in your life? What kind of a darkness are you facing? Let the light of Christ shine in that darkness and give you hope. Whatever darkness it may be. You know, just like all these people that lost that money in that bank failing in California. You know, and it, and it caused us to worry too. What about my bank? Is my bank safe? Well, where do you get hope? Where do you get light in the midst of those challenges? From the Bible. The Bible is the light for our lives. And we go to the Bible. And what does the Bible talk about? It talks about store up your treasures in heaven. Those are our true treasures. The treasures of heaven. So even in the midst of the darkness of our lives, when we lose all our money because our bank fails, hopefully that would happen to you. Hopefully it didn't happen to you. But even if it did, thank God that you have treasure in heaven because Jesus has a perfect, wonderful, amazing home ready for you in heaven above because he suffered and died on the cross for you. So find hope in the midst of the darkness of this world because as Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You have that light of life. So shine with the light of Christ. And let his light shine in your life. That you might be a light to others. For Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. And now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now you may be seated as we sing the next hymn. Four twenty seven. Four twenty seven. 